Hello learners, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. We start a new module today. We tend to discuss, we will discuss something which is really important when it comes to labor welfare and industrial relations, which is nothing but the workers participation in management. A small introduction into the topic before we actually actually delve into the, the entire uh, philosophy behind why workers participation is essential. When you look into the evolution in the previous modules we have seen categorically the evolution of the labor welfare and the industrial relations altogether. We have understood that there are different stakeholders, there are different dimensions, there are different equations of these stakeholders coming together. All these aspects are certainly hinged on or certainly rooted in one single aspect which is workers participation. Now workers participation in management is all the more significant because it brings in a decision making power to the lower hierarchy. This is what we will discuss today. I am Dr. Abraham Sir I am a faculty at the School of Business Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So when we look into workers participation, what do you mean by workers participation? Let us understand this from the background of the different entities. You have let us say the, the large accumulation of capital in one place what we call as the employer. We have the employee or the worker or uh, you know the have nots in, in another hand. So when there is a tussle, when there is let us say a, a inherent you know maybe a fight or maybe a, 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 a dislike or maybe there is a certain level of uh, participation that is warranted from either of the parties. Now employer is the person or employer is the entity who is running the show. When you are looking into employee, hardly do they get the actual opportunity to be in a table where there is actual productive discussions on the decision making process is going on. So this is where the workers participation in management is critical. Let me also give you one idea what I feel when you look into participation another uh, significant factor is involvement and another significant factor is commitment. So we have P for participation, we have involvement I and we have commitment. So basically there is a small equation which I think would be effective for you to know. When you have participation plus commitment, you have involvement. That is I is equal to P plus C. You have participation plus commitment that leads to involvement of you in the particular scenario. It could be a committee, it could be a let us say any, any particular team, it could be uh, you know something like research and development, organization, anything. If you do not have the involvement that is essentially the participation plus commitment, then hardly there would be any involvement. On that note, let us look deeper into workers participation. Rather, I would have preferred to call it workers involvement. So let us look into workers participation. When you look into workers participation, it is nothing but it is a, it's a system where workers and the management share important information with each other and participate in the decision uh, taking process. When you look into the, the evolution of workers participation in management specifically, uh, the concept of workers participation in management has evolved over the years in response to the changing socio-economic and political conditions. We have in India especially the first initiative if we want to dig deeper, we will understand that the first initiative to involve workers in management was the workers participation in management scheme that happened in 1971. The scheme actually aimed to establish joint consultative committees, JCC, it was called as JCC which is joint consultative committees at the plant level to facilitate communication and consultation between workers and management. So if you see since then almost since 1971 especially uh, you know there is no point in discussing about workers participation uh, prior independence. We look into uh, prior independence and we see that hardly any of the industrialists, any of the organizations for that matter had the typical autonomy uh, that we otherwise enjoy today. So we have to discuss or understand this in the background that post independence a little more of uh, the autonomy or uh, the independence had come into us so that you know even the employers if they wanted 
I, I, I put that if in bold letters, if they want it, they can actually bring the employees also on board in decision making process and such a process or such an initiative was this, uh, you know, management scheme in 1971. So when you look from that point, Various committees and commissions have been established to study and recommend measures for the effective implementation of workers' participation management. So, workers' participation is a system where workers and management share important information. Please note, this is vital. Informed decision, we are living in an in a era of information, we always tend to make informed decisions, so important information with each other and participate in decision taking. So it is viewed as industrial democracy. This is the beauty of the participation in, in management, especially the workers participation management. So based on the principles of equity, equality and voluntarism, please recollect our earlier discussions with respect to equity and equality, the difference between two. It gives right to the workers representatives to criticize and offer constructive suggestions for better management. So you see, this is what actually marks the evolution of what we see or what we understand as the workers participation in management. When we understand workers participation, we have to define it. Let's take uh, the key definition from Kate Davis. We go to our own Kate Davis. We have even started our initial, if you, if you recollect, the initial few lectures with these definitions of Kate Davis. So participation refers to the mental and emotional involvement. So please note, I have already given you an introduction of involvement. If you recollect, it is I is equal to P plus C. Involvement happens when there is a certain other element other than participation also. Participation should be there. It is the vital component, but apart from participation, you also need to have the commitment. So when you are looking into the mental and emotional, here he has not used the word participation, maybe intentionally or maybe unknowingly, it is emotional in involvement of a person in a given situation which encourages him to contribute to group goals and share in responsibility of achieving them. So it is not only the mental and emotional involvement, if you ask me. If you ask Kate Davis, he will say that it is more than that. It is also the contribution to group goals and the share in responsibility. Many a time what happens that people are ready to get involved mentally, emotionally, no doubt about it. They are also to a certain extent ready to contribute. But when it comes to taking the responsibility, always remember that people will just run away. So it is the process by which authority and responsibility of managing industry are shared with workers. So this is what the grand definition of Kate Davis is all about when we look into workers' participation. So we understand this term participation with respect to varied or different parties involved in, in, in a decision-making process. For management, it is a joint concentration prior to decision-making uh, for workers. It means you know, co-determination while for, let's say, an entity like government, it is an association of labor with management without the final authority or responsibility in decision making. Uh, so this is what we technically understand from the word participation or workers' participation. So we have different viewpoints pertain to the involvement of the people. So it can be only described as a system of communication and consultation. It could be formal, it could be informal, but please note, employees of an organization are always kept informed about the affairs of the undertaking and through which they express or they have the, the platform to express their opinion and contribute to management decisions. So this is what we, we understand when we actually define workers participation. Now, what do you mean by participation? What do you mean by the concept of workers' participation? Participation in the process of decision making. Let's understand that in, in the background of the participation in the process of decision making. So when you look into participative decision making, PDM is the opportunity for an employee to provide input into the decision making process related to work matters that is work organization task priority or other organizational issues for example when they have let's say a say 
uh, in promoting new strategy ideas. There could be something like they, they have their own idea with respect to that or they can bring in, let's say, some expansion strategies for the company. They can bring in some research and development strategies because they have seen the actual production, maybe the actual service that is being rented. So this is what you understand by the participative decision making. It is a management initiative. If you if you uh, happen to go through any of the OB courses, we have also floated one uh, organizational behavior courses in this platform. If you look into uh, the theory why, which suggests that employees are interested in being committed and performing well if managers value their contributions in making decisions that technically affect the nature of the work. So this would run in the background of uh, the entire uh, participative decision making process. So the diverse opportunities to participate in decision making process can actually provide mutual benefits for employees and employers. This is what I wanted to underline here. Not only employees, but it is also beneficial activity for the employer. So we have seen that this PDM participative decision making enhances motivation. There are also theories which support that the PDM participative decision making uh, enhances organizational commitment and even job satisfaction. So if you delve into the research literature, it frames employee participation in different contexts. And this is very interesting if, if you are interested in the research side of the entire uh, topic. It is very interesting because the employee participation has been observed or seen in different contexts text depending upon the political situation, depending upon the social situation and even the legal environment of the country. Now let's look into the actual decision making. What uh, do you mean by actual decision making and how well is this different from the participative decision making process? So decision making and problem solving are ongoing processes, there is no doubt about it, of evaluating situations or problems. So we look into the alternatives, we consider those alternatives, we make Make choices based on the alternatives and following them up with necessary actions. This is exactly what you mean by the actual decision making process. Sometimes the decision making process is extremely short, sometimes the mental reflection is essentially instantaneous. So this is something we have to understand. Decision making does not actually mean that it is a long drawn process. It is a, a five year agenda. It is sort of, you know, at least it takes a larger chunk of your resources. No, sometimes there are decisions which are taken in very short span of time. As I already mentioned, sometimes essentially the decisions may be instantaneous, but you have to see the consequences of that. Based on that, it is always advisable it is always recommended to take informed decisions. When you look into the decision making process, what is the control you are having over the decision making process? When you look into the decision makers, they should use actually decision controls to ensure that the proposed action is the most appropriate action. This is the entire premise in which the entire decision making process and the control over the decision making actually runs. If the proposed action is the most is not the most appropriate, unfortunately the decision is not going to be the best decision. So decision controls actually support and validate the decision making process. They encourage reflection and set out a series of points to consider before making a decision. So what we understand here is when you look into participation, the concept of participation, there are certain elements which we have to consider. One is the participation in itself. Second is what do you mean by the actual decision making process? There are different alternatives that you have. As a worker, you have different alternatives. Every single worker will start with different alternatives. He or she may have different job offer. He or she may have different work timing that might be suited for him. He or she may have, you know, different wage constraints. He or she may have different living standards. Uh, he or she may have different uh, propensities to save or consume. So all these factors, I'm not giving an exhaustive list, but all these factors do have a say on determining whether there is a decision that is happening. And when you're looking into the control mechanisms, when you looking, looking into the checks and balances, these control mechanisms are vital because that will give, let's say if, if a employee, if a worker is involved in the decision making process, he or she would be actually interested more because they will be able to contribute more because there are certain checks and balances. So this is 
uh, the concept of participation and essentially I have tried my best to put it in the background of the labor welfare and industrial relations. Now, when you look further with respect to the worker participation, what we see is we have to look into why we need the worker participation. What exactly are the objectives of worker participation? Let us have a quick look into that. What are the different objectives of the worker participation. So, when you look into worker participation, the objective specifically, the concept of this worker's participation in management, you know, has its prime objectives. It could be economic, it could be uh, psychological, I would say it could be even social, ethical or even political for that matter. So, economic objective is definitely what we understand as to increase the worker's productivity. You know, psychological objective could be uh, potentially to aim uh, at raising the worker's level of motivation. There could be a a social angle associated to the objective which is mutual respect and understanding among principal groups actually leading to better effort with ethical objective uh, being to make let us say workers conscious of the democratic rights on the workplace. So, these would be the background uh, you know noises that you see. It is both social, it is a combination of economic, psychological, social, ethical and even political. So, let us look into uh, these objectives from that background. You know the first and the foremost objective what we see is increasing productivity. Increasing productivity of labor by improving cooperation between employers and employees. So, essentially it is an economic objective if you if you want me to classify it into one. So, productivity is sought to be increased by improving job satisfaction and definitely industrial relations. If we go for the second objective, it is the purpose of the participation that is to ensure human dignity and to get the workers a respectable status in society. We come to the, the most one of the critical or the most significant objective participation in management actually seeks to bring a change in the attitude of the worker. So, two important things change and the attitude of the worker through participation they will consider themselves as an integral part of the industry. So, please note when you are looking into this third objective, it is uh, making a sweeping statement because of two important things. One key word or one functional word is a change. So, the change is not an easy thing. So, change happens to be one of the objective then the thing itself is difficult. Second, it is not impossible, it is difficult. Second is how effectively the change could be made. So, when you are looking into the processes specifically, change of attitude is what is critically mentioned here. I do not want to enter into a detailed discussion on attitude, but let me, uh, you know, give you some inputs of attitude from the OB classes. If you if you happen to get an opportunity to follow the OB classes, please follow in NPTEL. We have the OB classes also. So, when you look into organizational behavior, OB classes specifically, when you look into the, the discipline of organizational behavior management, there is something called as attitude which is nothing but learned enduring predisposition towards a set of objects or people. So, there could be attitude towards a set of objects also, there could be a specific attitude towards a set of people. We can understand that we have, we have seen people having attitude towards a certain uh, set of people. It, it leads to a lot of uh, you know prejudices, it may also lead to stereotyping etc. We are not going into that. Even there are individuals who have an attitude towards a particular you know object. Let us say we have an attitude towards a particular food item, I do not like this food or I am very fond of this food. All these are your attitudinal differences towards a particular item. So, let us understand this attitude from the definition, it is a learned enduring predisposition towards a set of objects or a set of person or a sort of set of individuals. Now, when you are talking about change in attitude, I would like to pose a question. Is it easy to change the attitude? If you introspect within yourself or if you look into your surroundings, you will understand and you will agree with me. It is not impossible, but it is, it is difficult to change the attitude. Let me give you a very uh, different, a uh, crude example of this. Let us say you all have some, some sort of dress and if it has taken you, let us say to put this particular dress, if it has taken let us say some period in time, let us say it would be my age. If I have taken x years which is equivalent to my age to put this dress, am I going to simply take it out or change the dress just like that in 5 minutes? No. 
The answer is no, because it has taken so much of time. There are processes, there are situations where you, you know, you encounter a change in attitude. There are actually, you know, attempts like systematic desensitization in changing the attitude in psychology. But the thing is, it is not that easy. So when you are talking about the objective, one of the objective as, you know, change, in the attitude, that's why I technically made it one of the most important objectives. So please note, the third objective has to be one of the most critical objective. And coming to the fourth objective, you see that the participation provides the employees with an opportunity to express themselves and a sense of belonging, pride and accomplishment is there. So these are the different objectives that actually are being written with respect to the worker participation. So if we understand this, these four objectives in addition to the realizations of these objectives, effective participation, if you think deeper, you will be able to understand that effective participation by workers will also result in a sense of involvement among workers in organizational purposes and activities. It will have a sense of inducement to contribute their best with a sense of commonness and it will also have a sense of commitment to decisions to which they have a party. I repeat, you will have a sense of involvement. You will have a sense of inducement. sense of inducement to contribute the best with a sense of commonness and finally you will have a sense of commitment to decisions to which they have a party. So apart from these key objectives, I would say these three also are significantly important. So these are some of the objectives what we can, you know, jot down when it comes to the worker participation. Now let's understand the, the most pertinent question here. What is the need and what is the importance of worker participation? The participation of workers in management, if you ask me, is vital in the present industrial atmosphere. It creates a certain level of satisfaction among the workers, which in turn actually helps if you look into the present day scenario also in increasing their morale. So without cooperation of workers, industrial output can never be increased. So this is the primary understanding which underscores the need and the importance of workers' participation. Workers' participation in managerial role is a highly complex and dynamic concept in both developed and developing nations. So you look into the, the cross-cultural studies that have happened or the research that has gone into the worker participation specifically in both developed and developing countries, you will acknowledge and accept this fact that it is highly complex and certainly a very, very dynamic concept. So in modern days, due to the growth of large-scale enterprises, you know, increase in workforce, paternalistic philosophy and even practice of information consultation, the importance of workers' participation management has increased gradually over a period of years. So the growth of professionalism, uh, let it be in industry or wherever the worker is involved, advent of democracy in the entire world and the principle of social justice, transformation of traditional labor management relations have certainly added new dimension to the concept of participative management. So when you look into uh, let's say the importance, the benefits or what are the, the kickbacks of the workers' participation, you will definitely agree with the fact that there is increased commitment, there is growth of workers that is happening because of uh, the increased worker participation, there is satisfaction, there is you know, satisfaction of not only social, but also egoistic needs. There is acceptance of change. There is better industrial relationships that is happening today. Better efficiency of the production process is being marked. There is job satisfaction to say the least. Better understanding among the people is there. And also there is solidarity among workers. So when you look into the benefits part, when you look into the, the, the importance of the worker participation, you will see that it has facilitated or it will facilitate better understanding 
and mutual trust between employers and worker. It through participation, workers learn the problems of the industry and definitely they can better understand the role participation actually results in this involvement. Participation actually results into better employee satisfaction and motivation. So it helps to reduce industrial dispute and overall it promotes peace in industry. When you are looking into the worker participation, please understand people in general, people in general actually express resistance to change. So that's why when you know you came across a point of change in attitude, I certainly wanted to jump in because uh, you know people in general express resistance to change. They are not, you know, you take anybody, people are not very open to change. There are, there are always you know resistance that comes towards change. So it is due to maybe fear of economic and social loss. It could be mere fear psychosis that is causing it. But whatever said and done, workers participation management is good to convince people about the need for change and to get their acceptance towards that particular change. So this will inevitably, inconspicuously facilitate change. So participation of workers in management helps to promote what we understand today as industrial democracy, which is necessary for political democracy. You cannot have a country where there is no industrial democracy and you can just say that we need only political democracy. In fact, political democracy gets reinforced. Political democracy gets inspired from the industrial democracy. Also, please note that the participation in decision making helps the workers to think and take initiative. Workers' talent and ability are identified categorically. Workers' urge for self-expression or their urge to self-expression is actually satisfied with more of workers' participation. If you want to understand the benefits part, it has enhanced cooperation. It will definitely improve cooperation. Employees who are involved in management are more likely to cooperate and support management decisions because they feel they are more in line with company aims. The skin in the game comes into picture. You will see that you know there is no other alternative because they are also part of this decision making process there is no good reason that they can say or they can give so that they are not part of that decision making process so please note this enhanced cooperation or better cooperation is one of the significant factors or outcomes of worker participation there could be increased commitment and motivation as i men mentioned higher job satisfaction please recollect the, the the theories of you know organizational psychology here higher job satisfaction would come in Classical research works are there in this particular area which shows that increased commitment and motivation happens because of workers' participation. It gives higher job satisfaction. Workers are typically happier in their positions when they have a voice in decisions that impact their work. Their job happiness and morale are actually enhanced by this sense of ownership. So if you want to recollect some of the research studies that have happened in, in employee voice and employee silence, you see that higher job satisfaction is definitely, definitely an outcome or a consequence of psychological safety and thereby the, the ability to raise voice. Another important aspect being the greater motivation. Employee motivation is increased by participatory management because it makes them feel that their contributions are valued, their contributions are acknowledged. Employees with motivation are more creative and productive. So this is what we understand with respect to the need and importance of worker participation. When you look into worker participation, we should also appreciate the fact that it, it is a, a mechanism for enhanced problem solving and decision making. You bring in diverse perspectives. See, when you look into the worker participation, you see that there are employees. There are employees from different fields, different, con different background, different areas who contribute a variety of viewpoints and practical knowledge, which actually helps them to improve problem solving, it helps them to improve decision making. So this variety of viewpoints can actually lead to more creative and more of pragmatic solutions that were otherwise may not come from a single dimension uh, peripheral thinking process. So you also look into the faster implementation part. Employee, employee participation decision making increases the likelihood that they will comprehend and approve of the changes which facilitates the quicker and more seamless adoption of new strategies or policies. It is also phenomenal in improving the industrial relations. Let's look into it from a positive angle. 
the worker participation actually reduces the industrial dispute. When you are looking into participation in management, it lessens the possibility of labor conflicts. It lessens the possibility of strikes by addressing complaints and difficulties early on. So there is no delayed approach. There is no delay in, in actual decision making. You are already upon the issue. You are on board and we are all on the same page when it comes to workers participation. When you look into workers' participation, there is also cases of better workplace harmony that is coming in because of that. It fosters a positive work atmosphere by giving employees a feeling of community, a feeling of partnership. And also, there are elements of organizational growth and development. This in itself is a, is a topic of study, but I would like to relate it with the worker participation. There are also situations where you have enhanced performance. Let's say businesses that promote employee involvement frequently witness these gains in overall productivity. Workers put forth more effort to accomplish group objectives and are categorically more dedicated to the company's success. There is a Kaizen that's going on. There's a continuous improvement. I hope you understand when I use the word Kaizen. Kaizen means continuous improvement. Employee participation management fosters this culture, culture of continuous improvement, whereby the staff members regularly offer suggestions for actually raising output and efficiency. So these are some of the critical aspects when we are looking to the importance and the benefits, but it does not end there. I'm not presenting an exhaustive list, but also there are certain other, uh, you know, compliance and ethical practices if you are keen to know. There are situations of ethical decision making, you know, transparency, you know, ethical behavior are given more importance when employees are in management. This is a fact. This has been a proven fact. Workers have a role to play in ensuring that the choices are made fairly and honorably. There are critical cases of regulatory compliance. When I say regulatory compliance, employees who participate in management can actually raise concerns about non-compliance, which can help guarantee that the firm complies with labor laws and certain regulations. There are cases of personal and professional development. There are situations of skill enhancement that is happening due to worker participation. Workers that take part in you know, the management activities learn new abilities and obtain invaluable leadership and decision-making experience. So otherwise, they are not exposed to these conditions, exposed to these traits, exposed to these behavioral patterns. What they get here is invaluable leadership and decision-making experience. There is also certain career growth associated with it. The element of career growth or the dimension of the career growth is significant. When you look into employees, who show they can manage more responsibility can also improve in their careers because of this involvement. So this is certain, this is fundamental, this is technically very important when it comes to the worker participation in, in the decision making process. Now that said, it's not all rosy. We have seen the clear picture of what are the benefits, what are the importance specifically, but we should also understand that it is a two-way channel. There are certain challenges and the first and the foremost, in fact, the most important, as I already mentioned, is a resistance to change. Whenever you say change, it is not that easy. Resistance to change is significant. Resistance to change is a fact. When you look into the management resistance, managers who are afraid of losing control and authority may be reluctant to share decision-making authority. They may also have doubts about the workers' capacity to make valuable contributions to management choices. There might be employee resistance. Workers themselves may be reluctant to take on more duties out of lack of interest in management duties. What happens is that when you see that time and again, let's, let's take it from a generic perspective, not Consider yourself as a worker for a moment. Consider as an employee. Consider as a person who is, who is a part of this organization. In those situations, what happens is that, let's say you come into a particular situation, come into a particular uh, uh, area or, or domain where you have the expertise, but you are not included or you are not in, in, you know, involved or included in the decision-making process. What happens there? You tend to lose interest. You are no more related to the project domain. You don't, your, your expertise or your opinion or your ideas do not have any value in the decision making process. You tend to be indifferent. You tend to stay away from the decision making process. And in return, there is a severe employee resistance. That means tomorrow, when there is something critically that is asked from you, you may tend to resist 
the sharing of that particular information. There might be something definitely you will have, uh, let's say, uh, authority on, you will have a competency on, you will have a proficiency on, all those things will come back to you, but you will resist. This is employee resistance. So mainly with respect to worker participation, if workers are, if employees are getting involved in the decision making process, there is a sense of belongingness. There is a sense of ownership and this sense is what actually guides the entire worker participation forward. This sense of belongingness or the sense of shared ownership is what reinforces the whole worker participation. So please understand, employee resistance happens to be one of the key aspects. Another important aspect could be lack of skills and knowledge. Let's look into lack of skills and knowledge. When workers who may not have the managerial expertise or understanding needed to make wise judgments which can actually result in poor or ineffective decision making. So this is something which is very critical. Skill enhancement is one of the uh, typical aspect as we have seen in the importance part in the previous slide. We have seen how the enhancement of skill is vital. When we, when we look into the challenges, this is indeed one of the foremost challenges. Workers may not have the ma managerial expertise. Workers may not understand what is needed to make the judgments. So this disparity may actually require a large investment a very large investment in education and training. There could be certain communication barriers also. You look into you know, clear, honest and continuous communication between management and employees, that is actually sometimes or many a time missing from the employee-employer relationship. So this is what actually guides or may, it emanates as a challenge when it comes to worker participation. So please understand, these are some of the essential challenges which we see in this particular lecture with respect to the topic. When you look into uh, you know, uh, other challenges, there are conflicting interests. You know, employees and management may have distinct priorities, may have distinct objectives. It can be very difficult, very, very difficult to align these interests and may result in actual conflicts, especially when it comes to issues like, let's say, strategic direction, working conditions, and even profit distribution. So conflicting interests are there. This also could end up as challenges what workers want, what the employees want is may not be what the employers want or it is hardly there are situations where there is a case of strategic intent. Please recollect strategic intent means that the organizational objectives are in line with the individual objectives or individual goals. Many a time you do not see that the employee employer sync in the actual um, the objective part or the goals part. So this is actually leading to conflicting interest. Also please note that this is a time consuming process. You know more the stakeholders, more the people coming into decision definitely it's a time consuming process so when you look into this from the time angle in, if you include employees in managerial decision making it definitely is going to cost you more time it will the decision making even if it's happening it will happening uh, it will happen in a very slow pace it takes time to come to an urgent agreement or maybe to a, a critical agreement or make sure that everyone is heard, that itself is sometimes missed out. So which may not be feasible in let's say very urgent situations, very hectic situations. So these two are some of the time you know, constrained processes and specifically this happens to be a time consuming process. When you look into cultural and structural barriers, the structure and culture of an organization can make the worker participation ineffective. You know, using participatory management techniques may be actually challenging for hierarchical organizations with, you know, inflexible organizational structure. If you look into trade unions, they also have their part. Strong unions have the potential to simplify and complicate the worker participation. If it is, you know, serving their needs, they'll try to simplify it. If it is not serving their basic needs, then definitely they are going to complicate the WPM. So please note, unions may be useful for promoting worker involvement, but they may also advance agendas that run counter to those of management. So these are some of the uh, certain you know aspects when you actually look into worker participation management, some of the critical challenges we have tried to underline. Now, having discussed the challenges, we also have to look into the limitations part. When you are considering the limitations, we have workers being not so enthusiastic. 
The workers are not so enthusiastic about the scheme specifically and employers believe that they being incompetent cause delay in decisions. So some of the good decisions cannot be implemented for the lack of support from the workers. There could be potential, you know, weakness in trade unions. You know, in India, if you see, trade unions are not strong enough. There are multiplicities of trade unions. We have categorically discussed this during the trade union part and we will see we have seen that they are dominated and led by political leaders. So this makes trade unions weak. They have their own political agenda. They have their own political masters. They cannot show solidarity of workers many a time. This particular aspect, there should be one strong union so that they can elect competent representatives for participation. Moreover, there are certain problems that require specialized knowledge which workers do not possess otherwise. Hence, all such problems, all such issues cannot be solved through participation. They cannot even understand the gravity of the situation. When you look into the scope of participation, there are frequent restrictions on how much employees can actually participate. There are sometimes, you know, intentional restrictions. Sometimes there are systemic restrictions that actually prevent the employees or prevent the workers towards the participation. They may participate in operational decisions, but they are not included in high level or let me put it like this, strategic decision making process. This is unfortunate. This is uh, you know, uh, this marks the, the significance of a, a greater thought process or greater understanding and greater pondering over what is exactly happening in terms of the worker participation. Sometimes they are included in, in operational decisions. It is a welcome uh, move. But only considering them in the operational decision and not considering the workers in high level or let, uh, you know, what we understand as strategic decision making process is more of a bane than a boon. So please understand these are some of the scope with respect to the scope of participation. Now when you look into the limitations further, we understand that there are some legal and regulatory constraints. Countries differ greatly in their labor laws you know, regulations are different. Our set of laws, our set of acts, I've already, you know, discussed this across the different modules that we have already delayed our process. The, in, the industrial revolution itself did not translate in, in, in its entirety. We were much delayed, especially with respect to the, the making of the laws or the enactment of the acts, etc. So there are certain legal and regulatory differences and we are one of the significant players in that. Countries differ greatly in their labor laws and regulations, so which might restrict the extent to which employees can actually be involved in management. So adherence to certain legal statutes may actually limit the complete application of WPM methodology. So this is what we certainly understand with the legal and regulatory constraints. We move further, we see that there are other limitations like economic constraints. When you look into economic constraints, the viability of incorporating employees in management may be restricted by budgetary restrictions or economic downturns. Let's say in hard economic circumstances, organizations may put short-term survival ahead of the long-term participatory management practices. There are also cases of power dynamics. I've, I've, I've discussed in length with respect to, you know, the different uh, stakeholders, be it the worker, be it the workers association, workers organization, be it the trade union, uh, which is representing the employees. There is always a tussle. There is always a power struggle. There's always a power dynamics that is happening. So this power dynamics also has to be essentially worked out. There should be some power equations that is governed so all these power equations have to be converging or there should be a convergence of all these power equations towards one simple agenda which is workers participation. This is the relevance of power dynamics. When you look into participative setups, management frequently has a last say in decision making. We cannot deny that which can actually cause employee dissatisfaction if their opinions are routinely disregarded or overridden. When you look into other challenges or our limitations specifically, we have effectiveness and efficiency getting affected. There is no certainty that the workers' participation management will be effective. It is mostly dependent on the organizational setting. How is the organizational structure working on? The level of dedication from management and staff, the existence of processes and supportive culture. 
you know, even frustration and disengagement can also result from ineffective implementation. So this is what emerges as one of the significant limitations when we consider the workers' participation in management. And finally, we have cases of selective participation. Selective participation is always detrimental. Sometimes decision-making involves only a subset of workers, such as union representatives or senior employees, which might actually give the imp impression of favoritism and inequality to the general workforce. So we have seen extensively what do we uh, mean by the worker participation in management. We have seen what exactly was the need and requirement of workers participation management. What are ex essentially the, the outcomes or the consequences or the benefits or the importance or the significance of workers participation management. But when we discuss the limitations, this should be one of the key takeaway of this class. When we discuss the limitation, there was a mention of selective participation in the last slide. If you look into that with greater detail, most of the issues pertaining to the workers' participation management or what we understand as WPM is basically governed by the selective participation. Many a times, what comes out is just tokenism. It's just a formality that, okay, I want to, no, no, the company wants to bring the employees on board, some of the people, maybe trade union representative, maybe some influential workers of the lot, maybe somebody who is in good touch or in uh, following the same principles and aspirations of the management, a very few cohort, a very small percentage of the population, they, uh, population of the workforce, they might be actually getting the real opportunity to uh, be a member or participate in the, in the decision making process. Majority who are giving or having a counter opinion or difference in opinion with the management or with the employer might not find the possibility of getting to a decision making table, might not see that it is possible for that particular entity to go to the decision making process. So this is what is significant. If the employer is going for selective participation, if the employer is going for, you know, taking in only a a set of people as a part of tokenism just to show to the outside world that in our company even the workers are actually part of the decision making process then that is a wrong decision making process that is not worker participation management that is just another case of tokenism that is just another case of symbolism it is nothing serious the organization is not serious the employer is not serious with the worker participation on that note i'll end the class today we'll discuss more on uh, such important issues with respect to the labor, welfare and industrial relations in this uh, uh, coming modules and classes. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.